So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to replace a part inside an electric shower. Now, there are hundreds of electric showers and each shower's got probably eight or ten main components. So this, uh, this video is probably going to be more just to give, everybody, to give you the general idea of what to do. It's fairly straightforward and the things that we're going to do today will just make you understand what's got to be done. It doesn't matter what the shower is or what part's going in, these general rules apply. I think first of all we need to look at the tools that you're going to need. There's nothing particularly special that's going to be required. Um, probably just a range of screwdrivers, a couple of flat screwdrivers, a couple of posi, screw, posi drive screwdrivers. These are the things that you use normally. Um, what's useful to have is a pair of fine nose pliers. Sometimes lifting a screw out or getting a clip, um, getting into a clip, is very useful to have a pair of pliers with a long nose on them. Um, the one other thing that you might use, it starts to get a little bit unusual, is um, a torque screwdriver. So that's got a, um, got a funny shaped end, it's for torque screws and it's used mostly by Myra but you'll find these torque screws appearing in other showers as well. Um, what you normally, normally the, the size it is in most of the showers is a T10, so it's a torx with a T10 bit. Occasionally you'll maybe need a pair of pliers, coupling pliers or pump pliers often they're often called, or a big key. And that's only if you ever need to disconnect the, um, the incoming supply from the, you know, from the water mains. It's unusual to have to do that, but occasionally you've got to do it. But the most important tool you've got is this, your camera. And you're probably better with a camera rather than, um, than, than your phone, because what you're looking for is decent quality images that you can refer back to when, um, if you happen to find that something's not fitting in exactly the right place. And so we take pictures before we start repairing the shower, and during the repair where we can look at the different parts as we go. So we'll make a start at this. And so now we're ready to take some photographs before we start. Probably what we want is one um, face onto the shower and probably one looking, looking up the way and looking down onto the wiring. This one's probably quite important to make sure we get that, that right. And then basically one from either side, just in case we have a problem and they're putting the shower back together again. That's the photographs taken. The part that we're going to replace is this part here, the flow valve. This is probably not the easiest part to replace, but it's right in the middle of the shower and it demonstrates the kind of problems, any problems you're likely to meet as you're repairing the shower. Okay, so there's no rules to this. Um, it's just in the case of time to decide which, bit, which way you want to do it. Um, we could uh, take the inlet connector and the solenoid apart first to take it out and try and get it out from the bottom or indeed we can go for the pressure switch. I think the pressure switch is probably going to be easier just with the way the pipes are connected, the individual connections are in the flow valve. So the uh, pressure switch has got three, three screws in it here, we're going to take the screws out first. And so that's the screws removed from this feels as if it'll just pull forward, ah, and it does. I can see it, that it's been located on two clips here, and I just pull it forward, that's it, go forward. See there's a cam here to operate the switches, and that's the, the, uh, the, sw the, the switch. Um, the next thing is, is the, uh, there's a little flag here that tells you whether, whether the shower is pressure or not. And I think before we take that out, we'll take another photograph. So the next thing is to remove this flag, so it just pulls forward and that's it out. And now we want to take the top of the pressure switch apart. Uh, and I see that the screws for this are slightly longer than the other screws. So just have to remember that when it comes to putting the ship, putting the parts back together. The pressure switch is sort of stuck in, and I think that that means that we're going to have to unscrew the, uh, take the screws out the heating tank just to give it enough room to move forward. And 
that's the heating tank loosened off. There's still just not enough movement to get this out. Um, I think probably what I'm going to do is slacken the screws off in the solenoid to see if that helps. I don't need to take these screws out the whole way, just a few turns, just to make sure the whole thing's slack, and that should help. Yeah, yeah, I can feel it's better. So, that's us off with the pressure switch, and we'll now see if the flow control will come out. It looks like you just need to push this up, that's it, and out it comes, and it needs turned off the heating tank, and there we go. That's the uh, the old pressure, the old flow switch. I see that there's an O-ring missing, and it's been left in place in here. So that's the O-ring out. As you can see, that um, when I've been disassembling the shower, I've laid the parts out in the order that the parts have come apart. The first set of screws, the pressure switch, the pressure flag, the long screws that I mentioned, the heating tank screws, the pressure switch itself, and uh, finally the fl the, uh, the flow control valve. It's always uh, just a good tip to make sure that um, you lay these things in order as you take them out, because then when you put them back, it's really just a case of working your way back along the line. And so here's our new. Uh, flow, uh, flow control um, and we're going to pop it back in. Now I remember this has got to be put onto the clip on the heating tank so that's it pushed in, turned round and into place. We've just got to make sure it goes in square and that the o-ring doesn't ride back up. That's it into the top of the solenoid, the o-ring is beautifully in place and now the pressure switch base itself making sure that we get the two locating pins at the front and once again, just going to make sure it goes in straight, that's that in, so now that's in straight. I notice that it's not dropping right back into place at the top here because the end of the micro switch is stopping, so I just want to, that's it, you can hear it clipping in there because the, the button in the micro switch was stopping it going properly into place. And we pop this micro switch back on and we now want to put the the flag on next and the front section, the switching section of the pressure switch and that's it beautifully back into place, you heard it clicking in. Now all I want to do is put the screws back, so we'll put all the screws in, we won't drive them all the way home yet because that will allow us to just check that everything's still firmly in place, so the screws. Now that's all the screws back and everything feels nicely in place, it's all located properly so I'm just going to go around and tighten the screws the rest of the way home. Okay, so that's all the screws back. All we've got to do now is turn the water on, um, switch the power on and put the cover back on. So first of all we'll put the cover on. Put the cover back on. Now I'm off to turn the water on and switch the power on. Okay, so now we have the power and the water back onto the shower. This is where, this is a really important bit that um, when we turn the before we turn the, the the shower back on again, we need to make sure it's set to cold. So we turn the power selector here to cold, and so long as this is set, the reason for setting this to cold is so that when we first send the water through the shower, it's going to clear any air in it and make sure that the, there's no power onto the elements if there's no water around them. So we um, set this to cold and then we can turn the shower back on. We turn the shower on and wait for the water to come through. When it's running we probably want to allow it to run for say 10 or 15 seconds. Just make sure that it's a steady stream of water. Once the water's nice and steady we can then turn on the power. So we turn on to setting one, leave it for a second or two and then probably on to the second setting. Um, once you feel there's hot water coming through the shower, that's fine. Let's switch the shower off. Switch the shower off. And the final part of the job is to go and turn the power off again, take the cover off and have a really close look around and make sure there's no drips coming from, from anywhere and everything looks okay. Once you've done that, everything's okay. Cover back on, switch the shower on and go and have a shower.